Hey guys, welcome back to my free CodeCamp JavaScript algorithm tutorial videos. Last time we met, we did binary agents, and today we're going to be tackling everything be true. As always, if you haven't checked this one out, please pause the video now, go on this website, uh, try it out on your own, and whether you're stuck or you've solved it, come back to this video, and I will show you guys a couple of different ways that we can approach this problem. So, I'm going to assume you have done that. Now let's click in and let's read the directions. Check if the predicate, the second argument, is truthy on all elements of a collection, i.e. the first argument. In other words, you are given an array collection of objects. The predicate pre, this pre right here, will be an object properly and you will need to return true if its value is truthy, otherwise return false. In JavaScript, truthy values are values that translate to true when evaluated in a Boolean context. Remember, you can access object properties through either a dot notation or a square bracket notation. Okay, uh, before we go on, let's really talk about this concept of something being truthy and something being falsy. So I Googled that real quick and I landed on this website right here. Uh, if you want to follow along, links are in the description below. Uh, it's sitepoint.com slash javascript hyphen truthy hyphen falsy. And they kind of talk about what that's all about. Uh, it's hard to list the values that are truthy because almost everything is truthy. It's more insightful to list the values that are considered falsy. So here are the list that is considered falsy right here. Hopefully you can see that here. False obviously is falsy. And by the way, what does it mean for something to be falsy? If you were to put some of these variables inside an if condition, it would turn out as false. So false is considered falsy. The number zero uh, is falsy. A empty string is falsy. Null, undefined, and nan, which is not a number. These are all falsy values. By the way, nan is a, actually a type. It's actually a, a keyword in JavaScript. It comes built in with JavaScript. And let me just show you guys what this means. I'm gonna make a function here, not related to this problem, but just to explain the whole concept of something being truthy and something being falsy. Let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna make call this function true or false. What we will do is we'll be given an argument that I will call argument, and we will say if argument return true, else return false. So what does this mean? Uh, we're passing in an argument here, and let me give you an example of that. Console log true or false, and let's maybe pass in false. So argument takes place of false, argument becomes false. So if false, return true. But obviously false is considered falsy, so you'll fail this test and go over here and give us back false. Let's see if that is the case. And we get false right here. Uh, another thing that's considered falsy is the number zero. So let's try that. So if zero, zero is considered falsy, so we should, uh, we should fail this test and come back over here. And we do get false. Now, this is something that's very important. The number zero is falsy value. However, the string, the character value of zero should be truthy. And that's what they say here. Let's test that out and see if we get true down here. I run it again and I do get true. So this is the important distinction. These five things are the only things that are considered falsely. All right, so let's go back to the problem. So what we have to do, and before I go on, let me just copy this, erase our example function and bring this over here. What we have to do is we're given two parameters. One, that is a collection. So this will be an array of objects. That objects are, remember, a bunch of key value pairs. So for example, this first object here has two entries, one with a key of user and one with a uh, key of sex. And pretty much these all have that thing. And what we want to do is we're given the second argument. This will be the key that we're checking. Uh, we want to test go through each of our collection, each element of collection, see if the value of our key that's presented in the second argument uh, yields all truthy values. If it yields all truthy values, then we will return true. Otherwise, if we even just get one falsy value, then we will return false. So I am going to assume that, this is how I'm going to approach this problem. I am going to assume that it is a truthy uh, object that we have, meaning everything 
is truthy. Everything in which we uh, put this, this pre key in it, the value of it will become a truthy value. And I'm going to see if one of these objects does not pass that criteria, then I will change that to false and return false. So I'm going to say let, and let's erase this comment. This is annoying me. Let is truthy be true. And now we're going to loop through our collection and check the pre key on it and see if any of the results gives us a false value. So let's do that. Uh, there's a uh, collection is an array. So there's a multiple ways that we could loop through this array, but probably the cleanest one that I could think of is a for of loop. So that's what we'll do here. We'll say for const object, because these things are objects inside of collection. So now our object variable will take place first of all as this one, and then as this one and so on. And how do we check to see if this key, when we put it into our object, will give us a truthy value? All we gotta do is kind of like my function that I had before, it's just if object at key pre is true, so we just have to leave it like that, then do something. And if it's not, then do something, right? But we don't really care if it's true because we're already assuming that it's truthy. So what we're testing for uh, is when it's not true. That's a not operator here. And what do we want to do when it's not true? We want to say, oh, it is no longer truthy. So we will say this is false. And as a matter of fact, we don't have to constantly go through in this loop. The moment we find at least one, at most one false value, we could just say uh, break out of this for loop. We don't have to loop through this, it, uh, this collection any longer. And then at the end, we could just say return is truthy. Now let's see if this works. Uh, so let's just look at this one now. The key that they have given us, the pre is sex. Let's see if the key sex, and hopefully this doesn't get demonetized. Uh, let's see if this yields a truthy value for all of our objects. First object, if you put this key in it, we get male, which is a truthy value. Uh, in the second object, we get male again. Third object, we get female. Fourth object, we get female. And so these are all truthy values, so this should yield true. Let's see if that's the case. Let me console log the result of this. Like so, and let's hope that we get true. And we do. So when will this become false? Let's say uh, for the last object, the sex of the object was not female, but just an empty string. And remember, an empty string is a false value, right? So in this case, we should get false here. Let's see if that is the case. And we do get false. So this appears to work. Let's see if we code camp likes the solution. Bring this over here, run the test, and it passes. All right, so let me show you guys a couple ways that we could refactor this code. One thing we could do is the moment we find one thing that is false, Instead of setting the variable to uh, false and then going out here and then returning that variable, why don't we just return false? So the moment we find something, we return false. Now what happens when we return in a for loop? All that happens is this whole function ends. The for loop stops, everything stops in this function and we just return back the value that is here, that is written here, which is false. So this is identical to what we had. All right. so. There is actually an easier way to do this and a more simpler way. And the, I'm going to use an array method. And the method that I'm thinking about is this one. It is called a uh, JavaScript. Let me Google this JavaScript MDN array. And it's called the one I'm looking for is called every. Let's read about this one. The every method returns uh, the every method tests whether all elements in the array pass the test implemented by the provided function, it returns a Boolean value. So it loops through every single element in the array that we're calling every on, and we give it a test condition, and it will, it will give you true if every single element passes that test, or if at least even just one element fails that test, it will give you false. And this is kind of similar to what we did here. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna say, Return, and I'm going to, re oh, let's just do this. I'm not going to return right away. I'll show you guys that later. 
let's say is true three is equal to collection dot every and we're gonna loop through every single object that is inside here and we are we want to test if they are all truthy and how do we test if they're all truthy we say object at pre if this is a true sweet value for every single object in this collection, then this will become true because this of this every method. If at least one of them uh, fails, it becomes this becomes a false value, then this will become this whole thing will become false. So we could erase this part, and that will essentially do the same thing right here. Now we're getting a yellow squiggly line here, and that's because we declared a variable only to return it right after. So why don't we just return this whole thing instead? like so. And as a matter of fact, if you like ES6 arrow notation, why don't we convert this so that we can shorten it somewhat more. Like so, we only have one expression inside the function. So we could just get rid of the return and the curly brace and just return this right away, like so. I think that looks pretty good. We can't get rid of these parentheses because we have two parameters. Let's see if that works. It seems like it does. We're getting false because this was an empty string right here. But if you put back a female here, it should work. And we get back true. Let's see if we code camp likes a solution. Where were we? Here we are. Run the tests and it passes. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me again today. Uh, today we did everything be true. And the next time we meet, we will do arguments optional. So if you guys like my content, please click like. If you disliked it, please click dislike. Uh, let me know, give me some feedbacks below. If you have any suggestions, please uh, post it below and I will surely reply back to you. Uh, if you like my content, subscribe. And I release these algorithms on almost a daily basis. And I release fun, whether it be a JavaScript project or React project on weekends. I also released a video series on the web developer roadmap 2020 edition so links on that about that in the description below hope you guys have a good day and happy coding